Okuma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba, trade union leader and author Leon Levy, joins me to unpack his memoir titled Back to the Front. So your memoir chronicles your early life, your family background and experience of political activism. So can you briefly tell us more on what drew you into the trade unions and anti-apartheid politics? Well, I was active from a very early age. I became interested in the general fight for equality and for human rights, which included all matters that human rights covered. And uh, I was particularly interested in the work of the trade unions. I read a lot about them. They were always in the news. And there was an opening in 1954, which that was correct for me. And I was invited by people who knew me within the trade union movement. And in those particular unions, which was the laundry and dry cleaning union, and the student planning union. There were two unions there, and they were in quite a difficulty because their general secretary had been banned in terms of the Suppression of Communism Act. In fact, they had taken someone on, but uh, that person had to leave for family reasons. And uh, I did say I'd not run a trade union before, and they weren't too worried about that. They knew my background, and they knew about my activities in the liberation movement. And so they, after quite considerable discussion, invited me to join. And I did on the 1st of May, 1954 in Tahan. And can you tell us about your days as the president of the South African Congress of Trade Union, where you held the position for nine years? Yes, there were many disputes that we had to deal with. There were meetings to organize, and um, each day brought different activities because a president is often required to be there all the time to give assistance, to give advice, to call upon others to help, to talk to employers, talk to union leaders. After all, we had, at the end of the day, uh, 56 trade unions affiliated to us. And so we did have to deal with all their queries. So a trade union is very busy in terms of advising, leading where there is a crisis, people are out in strike, the police are arresting them, the employers are not talking to anybody and will not meet with the union, and the coordinating body that to would have to jump in and see whether we could persuade the employer to talk or a manager to talk to us. And I did that so often and I became quite a dictator. And Leon, you were also served with banning orders and arrested several times. You were charged with high treason and you were accused number four of the 156 trialist in the famous prison trial in the 1950s. So can you tell us what you remember about this trial? Oh, a lot. It was a uh, most important trial. I remember the first day, and my book explains the trial. It covered most of the points, but it was really to defend the Freedom Charter. The Freedom Charter was really the main center of the treason trial. And the state, the police, the, gov 
statement deemed that the Freedom Charter was an attempt to establish a communist state by force and violence that we uh, all those details in the Freedom Charter, which we pointed to as best for a democratic state, were regarded as a rule to cause a revolution and to uh, set up a communist state. And our job for the five years, or nearly five years, but that four and a half years, our job was to take meeting by meeting, discussion, events, whatever the police brought forward as evidence. And they did bring all sorts of pictures that were pe people were made, detectives who were present at those meetings, to outline what we said. And they actually did continue that right up to the end. So we were talking about the activities of each one of the accused. It started off with 156 people. And each time, our defense counsel made the point that they haven't got allegations for everybody. There are only some that they are referring to. And we ask them in a treason matter, treason must be seen to be a plot. So all those in the plot should know what they were supposed to do, or did they all know about the plot all the time, or only some of them? And our job through our defense counsel was to show that, number one, they had got people who were not involved in any meetings that they were referring to, and number two, that uh, it was not a plot to overthrow the state, but a straightforward passive resistance movement that we had developed to militantly call for a freedom charter type of democracy. And in 2015, you were honoured with the Rabbi Chris Harris and Anne Harris Human Rights Award. So can you tell us about this award of recognition, what it meant to you? It meant a lot to me. It was recognition. The Jewish Board of Deputies presented that award to me. And uh, it meant a lot because at that time, there were not a lot of... Uh, people in the Jewish community that uh, gave recognition and respect for our fight for democracy. And after we achieved liberation, the board realized that it had not been as close to those Jewish uh, uh, fighters for freedom as they could have been. And they told me as a person who received the prize. I also uh, was very pleased to receive it, and uh, they recognized that I was deeply engaged in all kinds of activities which brought about the new constitution which we have today. And you spent 34 years in exile and then returned to South Africa. So what was it like returning to South Africa after all those years? Well, returning to South Africa was a most wonderful experience. 
I was away for 34 years, 34 years from 1963 to 1997. And uh, I was delighted to be back. And although I was really old, I was uh, uh, 67 at the time, I was determined to get back to the front, to the front of the struggle, and do what I could. I knew the trade union movement well, I knew the political agenda well, and I wanted to be active where I could be useful. And so it was quite a remarkable experience for me, and I was uh, recommended by Kusatu at that time to uh, the CCMA, where they appointed me as a commissioner for conciliation, mediation, and arbitration. And lastly, Leon, in your view, how have worker protections enshrined in the South Africa's democratic constitution assisted in rising the dignity of labor? Oh, they did indeed, because uh, the uh, shift from the picket line and strike, where people had to argue about their terms and conditions of employment on the picket line, and uh, employers wouldn't talk to them, top stewards and trade union leaders could now use the new legislation with Nelson Mandela government introduced. And those new laws that were brought in, the Labor Relations Act and the matters that are regarding equality, were all there on the statute book now. And we were able to discuss and settle problems which previously would never be settled as the workers would have been on strike, probably jailed or sent to the farms as farm laborers. But all that was changed in uh, the changeover to a democratic government. That was Leon Levy speaking to Criminal Media's Polity about Back to the Front.